Right friends, welcome back to news of the day. This is 7th April and we are going to deliberate briefly and editorial discussion from 11.30. The most important news is United States of America launched missile strikes against Syria after Donald Trump became the president of USA. This is the major decision. This decision was taken few hours ago and already United States of America launched missile strikes against Syrian bases. And here most important point is Russia is supporting the government. Yesterday I discussed about Syria crisis. There are three groups basically and the government Bashar al-Assad government is supported by Russia. Opposition is supported by USA and western countries. Now this uh, missile strikes and you may have a doubt why USA launched missile strikes because of chemical attack. Number of people lost their lives because of chemical attack and suspicion is on the Syria government to decimate the rebels. They used chemical weapons chemical weapons are prohibited under chemical weapons convention of 1990s and previously tons of chemical weapons were evacuated from Syria. Now how the government got chemical weapons? So under the circumstances now this missile strikes on Syria by United States of America assumed a lot of significance because of the reason one aspect is to contain Syria of using chemical weapons. Second most important aspect is strategic aspect in future how the relations are going to be between USA and Russia because of this incident. Because as I have already told you Russia is supporting the government and America is supporting opposition. Now chemical attacks are by the government allegedly by the government. Now USA launched missile attacks on Syria. We have to wait and see how it turns out to be in the days to come between USA and Russia and chemical weapons. In fact, in the chemical attack sarin is used, S-A-R-I-N sarin is used. It is known as nerve agent and it affects the nervous system immediately person will lose contact with the brain, nervous system will be paralyzed, it will not function, person lose life within 1 minute to 10 minutes and this is Syria and on one particular rebel held area this chemical weapons are reported to have been used and chemical weapons are examples of weapons of mass destruction, one is biological weapons. They were banned long ago, somewhere around 1970s. These are second class of weapons of mass destruction. These are also banned with the convention of 1990s. The third category that is a nuclear weapons. In fact, they are not banned. Nine countries hold nuclear weapons as on date as per the available information. Keep that aside. Let us come back to the discussion. Here types of chemical weapons are blister agents, blood agents, nerve agents and in the Syria case this was used, sarin was used and this is extremely toxic and have rapid effect enters the body through inhalation and through skin and person lose life anywhere between 1 minute to 10 minutes. So the geopolitics of Middle East are going to take a new turn with this, with the attack, missile attack on Syria by USA. Then chemical weapons convention belongs to 1997, 192 signatories are there. So destroying all the chemical weapons under international verif verification at the same time the protection to state parties against chemical threat and monitoring chemical industry to prevent re-emergence of new weapons in future. So these are the main goals of this chemical weapons convention and two cases in recent times one by North Korea and the other one in Syria. In fact 
if this goes to the non-state actors what will happen? Non-state actors means terrorists. If the chemical weapons like sarin goes into the hands of terrorists, what will happen to the countries? So, this is the biggest question mark the world is facing today. Today is World Health Day and please look into this global health campaigns. There are seven, sorry, eight global health campaigns starting from World TB Day we celebrated last month. India wants to eliminate TB and the target given is 2025 and World TB Day was celebrated on March 24. Today is World Health Day and the focus this year is on depression and theme is depression. Let us talk and please look into the other campaigns of uh, this World Health Organization. Then look into the visit of Bangladesh Prime Minister to India. We are deliberating for the past 2-3 days. Today here there is uh, one news item in the Times of India and here this is Bangladesh and please do not forget certain important geographical aspects. Five Indian states share border with Bangladesh, five Indian states share border with Bangladesh, those five are West Bengal, West Bengal shares longest border with Bangladesh, then the remaining four states are Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. So, please look into this map. At the same time for Myanmar also please do not forget, four states share border with Myanmar. They are starting from Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur and Mizoram. These are very important from examination perspective and if you look at the important aspects as per this article, a historic land boundary agreement of 2015, yesterday we discussed enclaves were exchanged and the worry is basically the persecution of Hindu minorities in Bangladesh. Though the government is taking some steps, but still persecution of minority community are taking place in Bangladesh. And the positive point is Bangladesh allowed Indian vessels to dock at the Chittagong port after 40 years and another important aspect is Indian companies are developing this Paira port in Bangladesh. So, these are positive aspects. Negative aspects, this border I have shown you, India shares 4096 kilometers of border with Bangladesh and the thing which is not acceptable to Bangladesh is fencing of this 4096 kilometers land border, it is the point of contention as Bangladesh alleges that India has fallen afoul of 1975 agreement on this. I could not trace this agreement what exactly it talks about. And the next one is the two way trade is increasing, but the trade is in favor of India and Bangladesh feels that non tariff barriers are imposed by India. The trade that means the trade surplus is in favor of India that means Bangladesh has got a trade deficit with India and Bangladesh feels that non-tariff barriers are the reason for increasing the trade. Then or you can say non-tariff barriers are coming in the way of increasing the trade. Right? Yesterday we discussed important points that defense agreement with the China, most of the military hardware of Bangladesh is with the China. So, that is worrying point for India and India and Bangladesh are cooperating as far as ISI operations are concerned, but in India certain terrorists are taking shelter that is the cause of worry for Bangladesh. So, these are important aspects. Overall, I would like to tell you only point of dispute between India and Bangladesh is Tista river. I think solution is not going to come up this time also. Second point of worry for India is Bangladesh tilt towards China with regard to the defense purchases and at the same time this economic might of China because they announced billions of dollars of investments in Bangladesh. Right? Let us leave this here. Farm loan waiver a bad idea says RPI governor. 
RBI governor says that it is a moral hazard, basically it destroys the credit culture, it destroys the credit culture basically. So, farm loan waiver is a bad idea, already you are seeing number of requests from other states also. Uttar Pradesh waived some loans of uh, farmers and demands are coming from states like Maharashtra. Maharashtra is also in the process of waiving the farm loans and what the RBI governor feels is it will spoil the credit culture and it will become a moral hazard. Then the next one is Maldives opposition says that if voted to power they will review China pacts. This is the cause of worry mostly for India. You see Maldives is a tiny country and here what is happening is, please look into this news item. India is very much worried about one constitutional amendment in Maldives. Here the constitutional amendment or you can say Maldives allows foreign entities to buy land if their investment exceeds 1 billion dollars. Please listen carefully, as per the law in Maldives, if the investment exceeds 1 billion dollars, then foreign entities can buy land. And incidentally, China invested heavily in infrastructure projects, that is one part. And it also funded expansion of Malay airport. So, Chinese investments are quite huge in Maldives, that is the cause of worry for India. And second important point is one particular class that if the investment is 1 billion dollars, foreign entities are allowed to purchase land. Probably this is the real cause of worry for India because in future China may establish its military bases in Maldives, right. Then the next one is center kicks off program on cyber physical systems. This is about developing computer based systems which operates driverless cars computer based systems which operates automatically micro grids of electricity. Electricity grids, the power distribution will be optimized and for that purpose this mechanism will be devised or you can say computer based systems will be devised and for that purpose government conceived an idea of rupees 3000 crore project and 100 crores was allotted initially and the name of the program is Cyber Physical Systems or CPS. So, the main purpose is to develop islands of excellence in IITs, to develop computer based systems which will operate unmanned aerial vehicles or you can say drones driverless cars, microgrids. So, automatically they will be controlled with the sensors and this computer based systems will be developed and IITs are supposed or being developed as centers of excellence and further troop is 100 crore is given initially, right. Lot more news are expected on this and in mains also this may be a potential question. What do you understand by this cyber physical systems and we are lagging behind. If you look at United States of America, in fact National Science Foundation of USA has identified it as a key area of interdisciplinary research in 2003 itself. So, now after 14 years India just made a baby step by allotting rupees 100 crores and by the time India goes ahead, what will happen? By that time total world developed countries will lead in this sphere, right. Look into the next issue. This is use restraint in article 142. Lawyers tell Supreme Court to invoke it judiciously. Lawyers say 
that you cannot use it as and when you want it, it has to be used judiciously. You may have a doubt what is meant by article 142, article 142 gives the Supreme Court power to intervene with the aim of ensuring complete justice. If Supreme Court feels that complete justice is required to be ensured, then article 142 will be invoked. It should be an exceptional measure. Lawyers advise the Supreme Court, please read this news item. Thista hangs fire as Hasina arrives. She will be in India from 7th to 10th. We are deliberating for the past 2 3 days. As I have already told you, Tista river is the bone of contention. West Bengal chief minister all depends on Mamta Banerjee and she is going to meet in Rashtrapati Bhavan, Sheikh Hasina and we have to wait and see what will emerge out of it. Basically, for Tista river water deal, center cannot do much. It involves the issues of West Bengal and West Bengal chief minister must agree to it, right. Look into the next one. The next one is with regard to India-Russia seal deal on Kudankulam unit 1 and here some formalities were signed. It is all already a reality. So, Kudankulam this is in South Tamil Nadu and here nuclear reactors are being built with the assistance of Russia. And look at the next item, Aung San Suu Kyi denies ethnic cleansing of Rohingya minority. We deliberated last week about the plight of Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar. We also deliberated, they stay in Rakhine state and almost 1 million Muslims are there and they are being persecuted. This is Rakhine state of Myanmar and they are escaping to the adjacent Bangladesh. Bangladesh is feeling the pinch of mass migration of Rohingyas and recently they reached India also in several cities they came and this Rohingyas issue, no one is bothering in the world today and Aung San Suu Kyi says no ethnic cleansing but international organizations say they are being persecuted, they are being eliminated and this is known as ethnic cleansing, right. So, the problem with regard to this Rohingya Muslims is in Myanmar, right. So, these things please do not forget. The next one is RBI holds policy rate, raises reverse repo rate. Here few things I would like to tell you from examination perspective. Two changes occurred in 2016. First change is government of India notified inflation target. Government of India has given inflation target. So, it is based on consumer price index that is one part. Second important aspect is it is notified 4 percent inflation target with a variable band of plus or minus 2 percent. So, here the monetary policy of Reserve Bank of India has to take care of inflation versus growth. Everyone wants growth, but if growth is increasing, there is element of inflation also. So, if growth goes up to 10 percent, 9 percent. The second aspect to be taken care of is inflation because when growth is there, everyone may not benefit. But if inflation is there, please understand carefully, if growth is 9 percent or 10 percent, it may not result into benefit to the entire country. All the people may not be affected by that or you can say it may not reach to the downtrodden sections of society, but if inflation is 10 percent or 12 percent, the most affected persons are below poverty line people. If inflation is more, 
the worst affected are below poverty line people. So, as to protect them, inflation is to be controlled, sometimes at the cost of growth also. So, judicious balance between inflation and growth is to be maintained and this is given, the task is given, please ensure the inflation between 2 percent and 6 percent or you can say 4 percent plus or minus 2 percent. If this is not within this range for 3 consecutive quarters, then RBI has to give explanation to the government. So, the RPI's policy is maintaining inflation of 4 percent plus or minus 2 percent, 4 percent is ideal. Second important point is monetary policy committee was framed last year by amendments to RBI Act. Now, monetary policy committee has got 6 members, 3 members of RBI, 3 members external members. So, now the composition of monetary policy committee constitutes six members, this is very, very important. These two things please do not forget, when you look at 2016 and now salient features of monetary policy, policy repo rate is retained at 6.25 percent, but reverse repo rate is increased to 6 percent. So, the gap between policy repo rate and reverse repo rate is reduced. Why reverse repo is in increased? The fundamental question is normally RBI looks at repo rate and remaining things are tagged to it, but why this time reverse repo rate is increased? Because of the reason banks are flushed with a lot of cash, banks are with a lot of liquidity and there is not much demand for credit. Excess liquidity is with the banking system and what banks will do? When excess liquidity is there, they will try to park with the Reserve Bank of India. So, this 6 percent is the interest given by Reserve Bank of India to the banks. When banks park excess liquidity with Reserve Bank of India, so Reserve Bank felt that there is a lot of liquidity at present, let the banks get some more interest, right. So, if you want more, please listen to editorial discussion, we are going to deliberate and another important aspect is banks are allowed most important decision, banks are allowed to invest in real estate investment trusts and infrastructure investment trusts. That is one major decision taken yesterday. Then center may seek legislative nod of rail development authority. As per the news item, rail development authority just like any other regulator we discussed yesterday. Rail development authority is like any other regulator, like telecom regulator, like food regulator, like civil aviation regulator. So, here legislative nod for RDA initially, it will be established as an executive body. Subsequently, it will be made a statutory body that is as per this news item. Smoking causes 1 in 10 deaths worldwide and 50 percent of the deaths attributable to tobacco use occurred in China, India, USA and Russia in 2015. So, as per global burden of disease report, as per global burden of disease report, it says that 50 percent of the smoking deaths occurred in four countries, India, China, USA and Russia in 2015. Domestic problem.